Welcome to the Elevate Everyday Podcast. I'm your host, Cade Junkerth, and I'm joined today by a great guest. He's an expert in mindfulness, journaling, and something called laughter yoga. And I'm, I, I see why he's been successful in this area because I, I love this guy's laugh. He's got a good energy. You guys are going to get a lot of value from Peter today. Uh, and he's also got an app that helps you with mindfulness and gratitude that we'll talk about at the very end of the podcast. But super pumped to have this conversation with Peter. Guys, listen, listen in, you know, listen to the very end. He's going to give us some really valuable knowledge on how to be mindful, journal, and and use laughter yoga to to improve your your state and your energy. So enjoy this one, guys. Uh, and thank you, Peter, for being on the podcast, sir. Oh, thanks for having me, Cade. Uh, I like your energy too, Sunshine, so I'm very excited to be uh, part of this mix. Let's see how it goes down. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Awesome. So so what originally kind of got you in to mindfulness, journaling, and this laughter yoga? Yeah, well, there's a journey there. I mean, I, as a kid, I was always surfing, so I think like you kind of when you're in the ocean, you've got this connection with nature, which is a, you know, definitely a part of mindfulness in that quiet time and you know that serene world. You can, you know, catch that vibe, you know, organically. Okay. And then as I grew up, um, you know, yoga wasn't as popular as as it is now, but I was interested just for helping. Like everything I do, kind of revolves around surfing, so. You know, I was taking up yoga and then they had a meditation at the end of yoga, okay. which really, you know, was inspiring on that level. And and I suppose it was, you know, there was professional surfers and people that were interested in yoga and things like that, which was an influence um, as much as, you know, I was growing up in the pretty wild times of the uh, 90s, which <laughs> a lot of professionals weren't taking it as professionally as they do these days. But okay. yeah, I got some positive influences and some routes to go through that. So that was probably my first check-in with uh, mindfulness as, as a formal practice. Gotcha. But then, um, yeah, life kind of has its way, right? You always uh, start somewhere and then then you weave through life and and things don't always go as you thought they would. Right. But, okay. yeah, I, I think I picked up um, journaling. It would have been more, much more recently. It would have been um, maybe 10 years ago. I got a book called Write Yourself Happy. Okay. And I've got a lot of books on the shelf with happiness in the title, would you believe? Uh, <laughs> and uh, and I took this course. So it was like, you know, 10 questions on like 10 different common um, elements of life. And, and once that was over, I really noticed that was a missing component of my life okay. because it, it set me up. It, it made you shift your mindset into, you know, how good your life was. And, and how amazing, you know, there was opportunities all around if you just focused your attention there. So, yeah, that was my journaling. I, I'd always enjoyed writing. Like, I, I'm a pretty keen writer. Uh, whenever I get a birthday card, I fill the thing to the max or, <laughs> you know, just just texting friends or something. I'm always pretty happy writing. Right. But, um, but, yeah, the laughter yoga came. That was another little um just a, a sent to me through literally the the crowd I was with and, and people were doing laughter yoga in the park which I thought was sweet and innocent and you know interesting but when I did the training there was a training literally my partner had organized training in the living room of my house oh wow uh, and so I joined that and then I found the depth of benefit and I was like oh wow this is actually really powerful and do you know what? I think I could actually really do this. You know, like yeah. uh, it just spoke to me from all of my years of being, you know, from the class clown as a kid to, you know, just being, you know, knee deep in the business world and seeing all of the stress and the challenge and just how people weren't really making the most of their life. Right. Um, you know, I, I kind of gravitate towards 
trying to do life in the best way possible as I'm sure you're the same and you know we find something that resonates with us and then we take it to the next level right right yeah and I, I think one thing you said really resonated with me in that like journaling and mindfulness it's like seeking out you know the the gratefulness and like the positive things in life because it, it it's always there right but we have to kind of put that extra little bit of effort in right to to kind of seek that out and and be intentional with with our mindset and our thoughts um to shift it in a positive direction right so um you know oh, what, what are some of the benefits that you've seen for yourself and maybe the people that you've worked with on some of the stuff the mindfulness you know the journaling even the laughter yoga like what have you kind of seen improve in your life and, and the people that you've worked with it's really interesting that um the deep dive that i've taken into mindfulness like uh, laughter yoga i started in like 2012 and you know that had elements of mindfulness within it and there was a lot of cross benefits and cross references in the well-being world with a system of laughter yoga but since i changed and started working on my app i took a a, a more direct route into mindfulness itself okay. and it's you know, for example, with laughter yoga, I would promote joy because it was a present state feeling that you could feel at any stage on your happiness journey, right? I don't like to oversell things. So if you are active, you know, physically active and that increases, you know, your blood flow and you, you oxygenate your body and you feel amazing, and then if you put some positive uh, actions and words like ha, ha, ha to it, like you can feel joy yep. and you can feel that at any stage of your life. Now with mindfulness, because it's more holistic, like there's quite a few elements to mindfulness, I believe I'm happier than I've ever been. And it's not based on the physicality it's right. more the mental state and, and their way of being. Yes. So um, I feel like I can actually start selling happiness with mindfulness being that core base, you know, mover to get you to where I believe is potentially a place you could be. And, and right. yeah, that's a pretty brave thing to say, I believe. No, I think that's <laughs> that's a super important point that you made. And that's something I've found for myself recently is you can, you can create, you know, more happiness in your life and it's really a choice, right? It's not, I think a lot of people think you need to achieve a certain thing. Like I'm going to be happy when I do this, you know, I'm going to be happy when I get the house. I'm going to be happy when I get the car, I'm going to be happy when I get the relationship. Right. But I think, you know, when you work on the mindfulness, you work on your gratitude, you know, you journal, you create the right mindset it's, it can really be a choice to decide to be happy no matter where you're at, right? Because you can, like you said, kind of seek out the positivity in whatever's going on. Mm. Um, so I think that's a really powerful yeah, the, the real key there, the key element with mindfulness there and what you're saying is the present state and not looking at the future, not looking at the past, but being comfortable being exactly where you are. Right. And hey, it might be an uncomfortable exactly where you are. I've been in stages of my life where I'm 100% weren't expecting me to be there. And, and from that point going, oh, wow, this is not what I had planned. And I want to be over there. And that is not the source of happiness. That's the source of anxiety and depression. Yeah. You know, if you're looking forward and you've, and you, you've got anxiety for the future because you, you're just so uncomfortable where you are. But even in the uncomfortable places, if you can be completely aware, hold yourself accountable for where you're at, and then from there, you can always make plans and, and take the steps to be where you prefer to be or what your goal set is to be. Right. But it's not a comfortable place hating where you are. Like there is, yeah. <laughs> you, you, you've got to be comfortable where you're at and, and practicing mindfulness is, is really practicing the present moment. For sure. 
For sure. So um, one question I had for you, because, you know, I do some journaling and I'm, you know, that's, that's my way of kind of practicing mindfulness morning and night. Um, what are some good prompts that you've found for yourself that have helped you and helped others? Um, you know, simple stuff like mine are pretty, you know, takes me a couple minutes a day, um, morning and night, but what are, what are some good prompts that, that you use? Well, in a free form journaling session where you've just got no parameters, I feel that we can always, you know, have a pretty decent day, but then focus on a negative aspect of the day and, and write about that. Um, but the the ability to, to shift the way you journal is also able to shift the way your mind picks up what you see in your world. So if you are consistently journaling and you are looking for gratitude, you know, that's the, that's the thing you're doing consistently, then you will literally be picking up things to be grateful for in your subconscious for the time that you come back to your journal writing. Right. Now, just to simplify journaling, you could, you know, definitely just start with the the day, the date and the time that you're writing it, that you're writing just to kind of be accountable to that factor of, you know, finding some consistency. And if you're inconsistent and the time, that's fine. But it's just like another step of accountability just to be writing down the day, date, time. Right. And from there, you, you're more than welcome to write down your day. But, you know, you can amplify your journaling by writing in how you feel. Mm -hmm. You can amplify journaling by putting more of your feelings and senses and, and color and life into the words you write because right. words are so powerful. Right. Like, you know, our favorite songs, books, movies, TV shows, they all start with words. And that collection of words really can turn something that's mediocre into something that's amazing. That's so creating something amazing is, is something with more life and color and feeling. And if you can do that, like if you just test that yourself, you journal without really considering that element. And then try again the next day and, and see if you can pull in as much of your emotions, feelings, senses, you know, the, the sights, smells, the colors that you saw, that is changing the way that your brain actually sees your world. And in the same way that looking for gratitude in your world, if you're actually journaling with more of your senses, then your senses are turned on and you see the world in more color and life. And it really amplifies your vision and your senses when you're just generally walking around. It's a pretty stunning, like, just that little shift can actually change the way you see your world. 100%. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's pretty crazy that we're having this discussion today because just didn't have the greatest day yesterday. Um, and then this morning I was like, I'm excited to both journal to kind of frame my mind, right. And talk to Peter, you know, to learn more about this, you know, this mindfulness mm -hmm. and journaling and everything. But, you know, some, some of the prompts that I kind of use, you know, just what am I grateful for today? What am I excited about those two simple things, you know, combined mm -hmm. with like, you're saying like, pay attention to the feelings and the details, how you're feeling, you know, reflect, internalize, you know, kind of combining that creates a positive mindset at the beginning of each day. And then if you reflect at the end of each day, I found, you know, it kind of helps you reflect on the day, see what you did right, you know, kind of reflect on what you could have maybe done a little bit better and then be grateful again and kind of also think about, um, you know, what, what were some big realizations from the day? So those are some of the things I use, but I think what you said about, you know, just paying attention to those details I think that's where a lot of that mindfulness comes in, you know, paying attention to the details of, of, of the day, you know, the sights, the sounds, all that stuff, even when you're walking around, like, you know, paying attention to little, little details, stuff like that gets you more focused, gets you more present, like you're saying. <clears throat> and then, yeah, paying attention to the details of how you're actually feeling. Cause a lot of times we just get caught up in, in busy work and, you know, go, 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 you know, take some time to, to really internalize your internal state. So I, I, that's what I kind of picked up from from some of the things you were saying there. Yeah, yeah. There's definitely value in the way that you're doing your journaling 
because it's not like that experience that you learn from it's reflecting on the experience so right. you know you could just you could just go day by day and have experiences that you were you know whether you're winning or losing in whatever way you see it but actually taking the time to look back and see you know if there was potential for growth there is sure. how you fast fast track your world to success in whichever way you want to see it absolutely absolutely and i think writing organizes your thoughts a lot better mm. and like yeah 100%. yeah helps you more clearly think about it so it's awesome cool yeah. and then um what is you know because we've mentioned it a couple times now and the, the listeners maybe were just wondering because i didn't know what it was but like how would you yeah. say what laughter yoga actually is like how, how would you describe that to the listeners Okay, well, I've had a little bit of a break off laughter yoga because of this <laughs> app that I've been working on. But I actually had my first laughter yoga session at a new yoga studio on, you know, just a couple of days ago. Okay. And it was awesome. So it simply is an action or a distraction for the fact that we're not laughing. Well, am I saying this right? <laughs> We laugh without the action. No, no, no. Let me say it again. I'm stumbling over my words. Okay. So we laugh as a step into life, right? And it's a system of exercises where we laugh with an action or a distraction because okay. we're not laughing with a comedy or humor response. That's what gotcha. I'm trying to say. <laughs> gotcha. So, And another thing in laughter yoga, you can't do it wrong. So... <laughs> as a lesson in my own uh, book there but it's there's four elements to it right there's a clapping mantra because when you clap and you can do this in the gym this is gold i love <laughs> like trying to connect the dots between my world and yours all right yeah. so when you clap you release endorphins into your bloodstream which is a natural feel-good drug and painkiller because wow. we've got acupressure points in our hands right yeah. So if you clap and you, your hands get warm and tingly, all right, and that's starting releasing endorphins into your body. Right. All right. So whenever anyone walks in the door, whenever, you know, you know, sometimes you might feel like you're going a bit over the top with your like cheering and that for each other in the gym, but you're actually activating this, you know, system that's reducing the pain in your body and it's actually making you feel better. So Wow. You know, like if you're at sport or theater and you're clapping, like, and you've got this energy lift, you know, you can yeah. create this in the gym it, and don't feel ashamed or don't feel like holding back. Like it's good. It's good. <laughs> it's purposeful. Yeah. Um, the second aspect of laughter yoga is a mindful breath. So we just kind of take a break between the laughing section with uh, checking in with a mindful breath. Cause you know, if you're aware of your breath, you can be aware of how you currently feel. Like when you when you're breathing normally, you use about you know 0. 0.6 of a um, liter. No, you do you do liters? <laughs> you don't do liters. <laughs> we, yeah, but we've got a lung capacity of about two liters, right? And we we use a good part of that when we're just you know walking around normally, and when we're exercising, we really want to you know just have that full clear of the lungs, right, to oxygenate the body. So laughter helps you do that too, but. With a mindful breath, we're aware of how we're breathing and, and just checking in, grounding a little bit. And then with the laughter exercises, we just do a series of laughter exercises, um, starting from just very simple actions, just from like connecting and shaking hands and giving okay. high tens and things. Gotcha. And then I work into more playfulness. And, and that looks like you know, maybe we're just walking around having a laugh on our phone and that's kind of slowing into the playfulness. And then we then we ramp it up and we're like, you know, running around the room like we're in a bumper car bumping into each other. Okay. And, um, you know, try that in the gym too. Just, you know, you know, just kind of get a little bit rough with each other, have a little laugh and a bump into each other, you know, just increasing that connectivity and playfulness. And then I I finish with like, you know the hokey pokey you know like you got the you know, yeah. you're holding hands and you're like whoa everyone's like you know and you're clapping and you're shouting and then you're putting your hands in the air and you know positive motion creates positive emotion 
Yeah. The laughter is a, you know, everyone's heard that laughter is the best medicine. Um, but to get consistent laughter in the modern world is really challenging. Um, so, you know, just to be able to do that, get as much laughter in as we can. We're laughing, we're having fun, we're grounding. Um, you know, we have positive affirmations just to lift the lid on, you know, practicing being positive and then finish with a meditation. And when you're so oxygenated and you've just been running around having the time of your life, um, you know, you finish with a nice grounding meditation and feel into your body and feel that warm fluidity and the glow in your body. It, it's quite often like the best people have felt in a very long time so yeah i think yeah, it's, it's a great share it's a pretty um pretty amazing thing and yeah you get a really good result it's awesome it's super interesting to me and it's it's really cool how like literally you can do certain actions to change your state and change your energy like the clapping you mentioned like that literally has physical response on you um yeah. increases your endorphins and things like that and yeah like i think it's really cool that you're you know you're doing things in a community aspect um you know doing certain actions and like getting yourself to laugh like to just increase your mood and increase your state that's i've never heard of this so i, I think it's super interesting uh, i'm sure the listeners you know are, are intrigued by this as well it's, it's actually just- a workout it's a proper workout you get people playing like kids and and they realize that they haven't done much cardio. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's amazing. And it's cool. It is it's like good for the you know, core. It it's it's also like, you know, it's kind of a, a similar, you know, parallel to to working out. So you just you get moving in certain ways and it's gonna increase your mood, increase your state, have kind of those brain chemicals firing the right way and everything. So very interesting. Very cool. It's giving people a license to be positive too, which, you know, I'm sure most cultures in the world, you know, no one's really um, comfortable being extroverted and that's okay. But, you know, if you're going to go somewhere, you may as well try and lift your spirit by, you know, practicing positivity and, and, you know, like, you know, whether it's a laughter yoga session or, or a gym session, you know, you, you got the license to create the culture that you choose in that gym. Right. And you may be sharing it with people, but if you've got the opportunity to be able to create a positive culture with people that are that are happy and comfortable in themselves to be able to have a good time. 100%. And that's the key element to really enjoy what you're doing more. Yeah. And then your body, if you're feeling good, your body sings. You know, you loosen up, you're feeling happier. You can do more when you're feeling your very best. Yeah, 100%. It's kind of funny. I did a coaching call as a group with all my clients this past week about enjoying your workouts more. And that was a lot of what we talked about was, you know, saying hi to the the front desk people, you know, fist bumping people that you see all the time, you know, um, just little things like that, having it more of a community aspect. And even if you work, work out from home, you know, maybe join some sort of like Apple watch competition online, or like join some Facebook group where people are trying to get fit, whatever it may be. If you can kind of create that community aspect, um, then it's going to make things more enjoyable for you. So I completely agree with that. So you are my man. I like <laughs> cool. And then, so we talked about, um, you know, you talked about some of the positive benefits, you know, the real physiological benefits of, of laughter yoga. What does kind of some of the formal research say about mindfulness and journaling, like the benefits that you can get? What does the real concrete research say about those things? Yeah, well, there's been um, a guy named John Kabat-Zinn. Um, if anyone wants a book on mindfulness, I would recommend John Kabat-Zinn's Wherever You Go, There You Are. Because it's an easy read and every book has just got a nugget of gold on it. So uh, he created the Mindfulness-Based Stress Reduction Clinic. And so they go through a series um, of, you know, a course where people are doing, you know, 40 minutes of um, meditation twice daily and things like that. So, you know, there's been a lot of research gone in when you've got 
someone that's got like literally a clinic um, based around mindfulness and, and being able to help people on in different, you know, stages of their health. Um, so we've definitely got stress reduction. Um, that is a big one. Um, and, and that one is easy to feel. Um, you've got other aspects like, you know, in, your improved overall mental health, you know, like in, improving your, your world based on your perception of your world. So that is a big one to be able to shift your um, ability to see things differently can really affect, you know, and as I was saying, like it's, it's how you think and how you feel are really well connected. So, right. you know, that is something that can um, be easily connecting the dots there, but we do have the physiological benefits of, you know, reduced blood pressure and reducing the heart rate, um, which is critical in, you know, all, times of your life other than when you're in the gym <laughs> for sure but, yeah. but there's resilience you know you get that emotional resilience when you're like you were saying you get to like actually in a in a place of stillness be able to be connected to your thoughts and you know really you know not like a filing cabinet but understand and and come to come to come to grips with your thoughts and emotions um you know in that moment of stillness is is a really powerful tool and and that is very clear that my resilience and ability to be able to brush off you know challenges in my life has increased exponentially it's there's never been a time in my life i've been so comfortable awesome. and um so yeah Things like that are just so um, easy to, you know, get your head around. Um, obviously, there's some, you know, things that are a little more anecdotal um, and, you know, things that, but yeah, the, the studies, people are so happy to study it because, you know, they feel a benefit and they're like, oh, this, this would be fun. Why don't we study mindfulness? We'll get, you know, we'll get to practice mindfulness for the next 12 weeks or something while we study it. That's pretty um, nice. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds like a yeah, nice yeah. to be a part of. But cool. So yeah. it's pretty amazing that literally our thoughts, and this is something I've talked about too before, our thoughts, what we actually believe, you know, how we form our thoughts, our mindset is going to have a literal physiological response. You know, we can just think a certain way and, and change our physiology, you know, with, with some of the things you said about, you know, lowering the blood pressure, everything like that. It's so interesting that literally, you know, framing your thoughts in a certain way can change your physiology. So this isn't necessarily, you know, a fitness podcast, me and you talking right here, like you're not, you're not a fitness expert, but it's so interesting that talking about mindfulness journaling, it has a, a response to your fitness, you know, it has a correlation there as well so that's super interesting so one thing i wanted to ask as well you know how can someone meditate and this is completely a, a segue that didn't make any sense but it's just kind of segueing into something else but how can someone meditate for success because this kind of goes i feel like against the grain of some of the things we've talked about where you know, you don't want to be thinking about the future. You don't want to be thinking about the past. You want to be present, but you know, is there a way, cause this is the elevate everyday podcast. You know, we're always trying to improve, um, get better every day. So how can someone purposefully, you know, with intention meditate or be mindful or journal to help them succeed in what they want to succeed in? Yeah. Well, you really get the opportunity in a meditation to figure out what your values are and, and what your success is. And you really can be stripping down, you know, that, that height of, of where you see, or you compare where you want to be, you know, to comparison with others, you can really just lose that. Get rid of, you're going to lose that comparative mindset yeah. when you're in the present moment and your comfortability being you and building a relationship with yourself right. means that, you know, you 
and your success level is more attainable because your your level of you know you, you're already feeling good about yourself yeah and there's no need to really fill that cup with anything other than you know living in the way that you choose and and that freedom and the and the you know the freedom to move you know like you've got that that health aspect where you've got you know i'm sure you've been injured and then you've you know lost some freedom of movement and that caused a level of like anxiety or depression because you're like you know you're like uh you know so the same with your mindset if you've got that freedom of your mindset to choose your thoughts and have power over that within you then your meditation process is sitting your meditation process is filing your thoughts it is not you know getting that that potential to be carried away by others and and other people's expectations so meditation is brilliant for creating success because it has your own interests at heart and you get to sit with yourself and you get, and it's i call it my lotto life you know like in a busy world having time out for myself is what I like to call the lotto life because yeah. you can change the way that you, you know, if you're always on and you're always trying to succeed, succeed, succeed at all costs, you're missing out on so much on that path. Now, a lot of people that you would perceive as being successful, if you were, you know, sitting with them, you may not envy their position at all. You may not envy their mindset. You may not feel like they're actually living life right. Right. So, yeah, you get this beautiful opportunity in being a consistent meditator to just be way more comfortable with your own present moment and that level of success based on, on your comfortability just pulls in a lot and and that you know makes success more attainable i think that's super powerful and kind of the way i heard that um you know relating it to my own journey is you know i, I love the injury analogy because sometimes your mind can just feel jumbled and when it when it's like that like you said you don't have the freedom to to have the right thoughts and kind of clearly think and organize the way you're thinking to to succeed or reach reach what you want to reach it just feels like it's jumbled feels like you're stuck you know kind of like the injury like you feel like you can't move right you know you, you got to just sit there and wait till it gets better so what i found in my own journey is with with journaling being more mindful you know reflecting a lot more trying to be grateful i found that i'm able to start and end the day every day with a much clearer mind and yeah i've got more freedom to organize my thoughts and make sure that i've got the right mindset to set myself up to take the right actions to succeed because i don't feel stuck i've got that freedom so that's what i kind of took away from what you said i think that's super powerful you're not so hard on yourself you know you go okay i've got this i've got that these things aren't going exactly how i planned that's okay. I've got time. I've got time to, you know, feel this out and there's no rush. There's no mad rush to get to where I thought I wanted to be right now. It's very interesting you say that because when I, before I started journaling and being more mindful, it felt like I had so much to do to get where I want to go. But now that I've started journaling and being more mindful, you know, writing down a lot more, it just feels like I've got to do one or two things every day. And as long as I do that, I'm going to get there. It's just a matter of time. Um, it just feels yeah. a lot more kind of step by step as opposed to like, man, I've just got all this stuff to do and, <laughs> to get where I want to go, right? So yeah. very cool. I'm sure you've got a lot of people that you can look up to that have, um, you know, achieved, you know, and they're much older and, and you realize that, okay, well, you know, time is a you know pretty hard thing to get a grasp of but 
you know, for myself in with surfing, like not only have we got Kelly Slater in, on the pro tour at 51, but I joined a longboard club, like a Malibu club. And, and the guys that are in their 60s, 70s are ripping, you know, they surf really well. So, you know, that, that kind of gives you that, that breath of relaxation too, where you're like, okay, I can, I can enjoy life for a very long time if I just right. stay healthy and on top of not only my health, but my mental health and um, everything will come together fine. I'm sure. hundred percent, hundred percent. Well, awesome. Peter Well, you know, I feel like I could keep talking with you for another two hours, <laughs> but I think we both got, you know, it's late there for you. So um, we'll, we'll kind of wrap this one up here, but tell us about your, your game on app. Yeah, well, the game on app was a COVID pivot, right? I couldn't laugh out loud because it was a super spreader. And there was so many elements that brought it together from, you know, always my mind trying to find ways to connect the dots with the laughter yoga and 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 helping people on their journey to find their way to win the day. You know, like you always want people to feel their best and just give them the simplest tools and the simplest steps to get there. So I created Game On based on the most potent questions that I could ask in a journal that you could do every day. And, and just to actually get that journaling experience into my day, because I'm a busy guy. I like waking up and doing yoga and meditating. And, you know, like I've got a lot of elements that I like to inject into my day. And, and as much as I knew journaling was one of them, journaling seems to take time and it could get wiped off the list over, you know, the more physical elements or, you know, just trying to keep in tune with different parts of the day. So I created Game On, a super efficient system of journaling where it's an acronym. It's spelled G-A-I-M-O-N. And so we write what I'm grateful for today, which is the fastest way to happiness. We say what we're, uh, I'm aware how I feel, which improves the emotional intelligence. And it helps dissipate negative feelings and it helps amplify positive feelings. Um, we set our intention for the day to really start the cogs turning and, and the brain functioning in a way that gets us to that goal as soon as we write it. You know, it's just making those steps happen in our mind, priming ourselves for success. We've got a mindful moment just to be able to start experientially learning and 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 getting the tick box of what mindfulness is all about and, and how to implement that in a very short space of time, whether it be a, a shift of perspective or actually taking the route to doing a mindfulness practice. And then the ON is organized non-doing and non-doing has the value of meditation without the stigma of, you know, meditation where you need to find a quiet spot, like, but just taking a couple of minutes out of your day just to, you know, reset, rejuvenate, relax, recharge, and just, you know, put your tech away so that you don't have to always be on and always, you know, getting information bombarded. So, cool. yeah. So that's those steps. You, you then choose a, um, a picture that resonates with you. And your first three answers, the gratitude, the awareness of how you feel and the intention all get animated over that picture. Cool. And you get like a beautiful old school Instagram type feed where, um, you know, you can check in with friends and like you have teams and groups. So, you know, you can have a circle of your friends or family or, you know, high performing teams um, or your gym or something like that. You know, you're all doing the work together and you can kind of see a depth of an individual when you see how they're showing up and they're consistently, you know, looking for a positive way to start their day. And Very yeah, good. it's a beautiful thing. And, you know, we've had some incredible um, feedback and results from it. So it's been pretty exciting. Awesome. Well, yeah, and I think we talked about, you know, having you on my, my coaching call with my clients and possibly putting a little team together on the Game On app um and doing that so i'm looking forward to to doing that for myself and some of my clients as a group um yeah I love it. yeah so very cool um well awesome and then this this is an app on <clears throat> on the apple um 
App Store. Yeah, yeah, we've just gone um, Android as well. So Apple nice. and Android on the web. So very cool. So just search oh, okay. Game On, guys. G A I M O N. Game On. Very cool. Got to get your game on. <laughs> get your game on. <laughs> I like it. Awesome, guys. Well, um, we'll go ahead and wrap this one up, Peter. We, I really appreciate you coming on. Uh, I know the listeners got a lot of value out of this. I did. I got a lot of value just from having this conversation with you, Peter. So I really appreciate it. Um, but guys, thank you for listening to the Elevate Everyday podcast. Um, take some of these things, you know, put them into action because this is all about, you know, don't just listen to to what we're learning here. It's all about taking action immediately on what you learn. So download the Game On app or at least start journaling, you know, just start being more aware of your thoughts, pay attention to the details. But I'll see you guys in the next video. And in the meantime, elevate every day. Thank you, Peter, for being on. Love you, okay. Peace out, y'all.